Welcome again, and in this session, we're going to be reading Mark chapter 7. We're going to be talking about what Jesus says, what defiles a man. And we're going to be talking about what Jesus said about a Syrophoenician woman's faith, and also how Jesus heals a deaf, uh, excuse me, a deaf and mute man, a man who cannot hear, a man who cannot speak. So let's get right into this. Uh, this is Mark chapter 7, verse 1. Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes gathered together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of his disciples eating bread with defiled, that is, unwashed hands, they, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews don't eat unless they wash their hands and forearms, holding to the tra tradition of the elders. They don't eat when they come from the marketplace unless they bathe themselves, and there, there are many other things which they have received to hold to. Washing of cups, pitchers, bronze vessels, and couches. The Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why don't your disciples walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat their bread with unwashed hands? You got dirty hands, man. When you want to wash your hands, according to the tradition of the elders. That's what all of the elders do. He answered them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honor, honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. So let's quickly go over here to Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, and we're going to read exactly what it says. The Lord said, Because this people draws near with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but they have removed their heart far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment of men which has been taught. You know, a lot of people today, a lot of Christians today fall in the same category. They, they, well, actually, you know, it's human nature to... If you go to church, if you if you have a spiritual leader who's teaching you, or if you're listening to something on TV or watching something, or whatever the case may be, uh, it's so easy to equate church or something like that to God. Oh, because our church does it, that's just the way God is. Because we sing hymns, that's the way we should be. I mean, that's because we sing, you know. Uh, what would we say? Some, uh, you know, blessed assurance. I guess that's the way God wants it to be. Because we we have Bibles, you know, because our church is that God must be equal to the church and church must be good with God. Everything that goes on in the church, everything that's in the church should be right with God. But that's not the way it is. There's a lot of things in churches that are put there by men that nobody ever thinks about. And lots of stuff. If you go through everything, all the ornaments in the church, all the books in the church, even pews, whatever the case may be, and you ask your question, you know, is this a tradition of, of the church or is this a commandment of men? You'd be surprised to, to find out how many things that you hold dear at. You, 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 you call it or you look at it as fearing God or obeying God, or doing the things that God wants you to do, when it's really just something that men want you to do. It's just really something that was invented by, thought up by, instituted by men, and not by God. Okay? It's so easy to do that. And that's what they did back in those days as well. Verse 8, For you set aside the commandment of God, and hold tightly to the tradition of men. I got to stop here again because a lot of people, Christians, you know, I've, I know so many pe Christians that would say, if you ask them, you know, are you a law abiding citizen? You know, speaking about the law of the land, the law of America or the law of, you know, of whatever country you're in. Okay. The law of the UK, the law of China, whatever. If you're, are you a law abiding Christian? Do you abide by the law of your land? Most, most of these, most Christians would say, yeah. 
And and so I was I was quite amazed to hear a figure that uh, that was quoted uh, from an American uh, researcher. They said that there has been that lawyers in America don't even know it, 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 it it's almost impossible to count how many laws there are in America. They estimate around four million. So if you're a Christian and you claim to be a law-abiding Christian, you're you're trying to tell me that you obey four million laws, most most of which are laws of men. And a lot of Christians would say they don't have to go by the law of God anymore. They don't have to go by the Torah anymore. They, the the law we are we're not under the law, but they put themselves under four million laws of men. There's something drastically wrong with that. I would say the same thing as what Jesus said. Hypocrite. Hypocrite. You you try to or you claim to obey the laws of men, but you don't even lift a finger to try to obey the law of God. After all, God did say it was easy. God is not like that. He doesn't bark out commands that you can't obey. The commandments of God are not burdensome, John said. In Deuteronomy, Moses said, more or less, it's easy. Okay, I say, I, I, I teach a lot about that, so I'm not going to go into all that detail, but it's easy. God makes it easy for you. Okay? Providing you're humble. Providing you're willing to sacrifice your, your, your self-will. Providing you're willing to take up your cross and follow him. Washing the pitchers and cups, and you do many other such things, uh, he said to them, Jesus said to them. Full well do you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. For Moshe, Moses, said, honor your father and your mother, and that is in Exodus 20 verse 12 and Deuteronomy 5 verse 16, and, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. Exodus 21, 17, Leviticus 20, verse 9. It's a very, very serious thing. Do not speak evil of your father or your mother. And God forbid and woe to anyone who would teach you to do so or even make you feel like you should do so. That's absolutely against the command and the will of Almighty God. Verse 11. But you say, if a, man ho- uh, if, if a man tells his father and mother, whatever prophet you might have received from me is korban, or korban is a Hebrew word for offering devoted to God. That's, it's an offering, okay? An offering, an animal sacrifice, or an offering, uh, a grain offering, oil. So whatever prophet you would have received from me is korban. In other words, what I could have done to, for you to help you and to bless you, instead I just gave it to God, okay? That, uh, you know, that uh, sheep that I sacrificed that you so desperately needed to eat, guess what? That's a korban. That's an offering. I'm going to give it to God, not to you. That is to say, give it to God, okay? So verse 12, Then you no longer allow him to do anything for his father or his mother, making void the word of God by your tradition, which you have handed down. You do many things like this. Okay, let me stop here for a second. Now, Jesus, in the book of in the book of Matthew, he uh, what Jesus is doing here is he is saying you are taking one concept or commandment or precept or law, and you are trying to take this to override another one, which you try to. For example, Jesus said, um, "You know, you should, you've you've uh, you've heard it said, eye for eye, tooth for tooth.' But I tell you, don't hold a gr- or don't hold a grudge against your neighbor. Okay, like, uh, you know, don't repay evil for evil. So, what Jesus was saying was, you take that one scripture, that one passage, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, and you use that to break another commandment, which is don't hold a grudge against somebody." So what Jesus was saying is, listen, you don't understand the full interpretation, the full application. Uh, 
the full implementation of what this that it really means. It really means eye for eye, truth for tooth is a, is is a is a law or a precept for the judges of Israel for justice in 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 the country. Okay, you don't you should not use that to hold a personal grudge against somebody. Well, you did this to me. I'm going to do this to you. You know, so you break one Torah commandment by trying to hide behind another. And that is what Jesus is saying here, is he said that these people are trying are breaking the commandment of honoring their father and mother. Actually, they're breaking two commandments and hiding behind another. They're hiding behind, oh, it's an offering. I'm obeying the laws of offerings. I'm, I'm, I'm giving an offering to God. God said to do it this way. I'm not going to give it to my mother and daughter or father. So they break honoring the father and mother. They break where it says you shall, you shall not speak evil of your father and mother. They break those two commandments by hiding behind another concept or commandment. Okay, And that's what Jesus went through in, in, in uh, Matthew, in the book of Matthew. If you want to, please go back and, and listen to my teachings on that. And so uh, you'll be blessed in doing so. Um, so verse 12 again. Then you no longer allow him to do anything for his father and mother, making void the word of God by, by your tradition, which you have handed down. You do many such things like this. Verse 14, he called all the multitude to himself and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing from outside a man that's going to make, uh, going, it's going into him can defile him. But the things which proceed out of the man are those that defile him. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. Now, the NU manuscripts, which are, uh, a lot of people believe that are they are the oldest manuscripts, omits verse 16. So, verse 17, when he had entered into, into a house away from the multitude, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, are you also without understanding? Like, don't you understand? Don't you get it, man? You should know. Don't you perceive that? With that whatever goes in to the man from outside can't defile him because it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach and then into the latrine, into the toilet, more or less, making all foods clean. Now, the NU, the oldest manuscripts, ends Jesus' direct, direct quote and uh, question after latrine, ending the verse with thus Ending the verse with, thus, uh, he declared all foods clean. He said, that which proceeds out of a man, out of the man, it, that which defiles the man. For from within, out of the hearts of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, sexual sins, murders, thefts, coveting, covetings, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, an evil eye, blasphemy, speaking evil, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Okay? So, let's make this very clear, okay? So, Jesus is not saying, uh, I mean, this is a generality. We know that there are things that you eat, and it says in the scriptures there are things to eat that, that is unclean things, okay? So, what Jesus is saying is, that is generally not what you should be concerned about. You should be more concerned about what's coming out of your mouth. Okay? That, that which proceeds out of the man is what, is what defiles a man. Okay? That, would that which uh, for within the man, uh, the hearts of men, are evil thoughts, adultery, sexual sins, murders, thefts, covetings, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. From there he arose and went away into the borders of Tyre and Sidon. He entered into a house and didn't want anyone to know it, but he couldn't escape notice. For a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit, having heard, having heard of him, came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by race. She begged him that he would cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, Let the children be filled first, the children meaning the children of Israel, 
for it is not appropriate to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. So Jesus is calling the woman a dog because she's not a Jew. Okay, uh, she's not part of the children of Israel. All right. Uh, this here is, I know, a hard thing for a lot of people to swallow, thinking that you can't really think. If you look at it for what it is, a lot of these people today would say that Jesus is a racist and sexist and all this kind of stuff. Okay. But Jesus is Jesus. And most Christians would tell you, and a lot of people, even in other religions, would tell you that Jesus is holy, if not the most holy man, one of the most holy mans that's ever lived. Okay. It depends on who you, who you ask. Okay, so this is what he says. Now, in the book of Matthew, again, it goes into a whole lot more detail. So I, again, I uh, encourage you to listen to uh, the teachings in Matthew about this. But this is the way it look, that the Jewish people looks at it. Even today, a lot of the Jewish people look at other uh, non-Jews as being animals. In the book of Acts, when, when Peter had a vision of, uh, of all these unclean animals on a sheet where God let, uh, let him down and God said, kill and eat. And he said, no, God forbid, I kill and eat. That tells you something. Peter walked with Jesus three years, they say, at least three years. He heard all of Jesus' teachings. If Jesus really taught that you are, or it's okay to eat pork now, if he really taught that and all the other unclean animals, then wouldn't Peter say, in the vision, wouldn't Peter say, Oh, sure, 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 God. I mean, no problem. Jesus said we can eat these things. No, he didn't say that. He said very clearly, God forbid I eat this stuff because it's unclean. I know it's not right for me to eat. He should know what the teachings of Mashiach, of the teachings of Yeshua, the, the real teachings of Jesus were, okay? Take the clues, okay? Think a little bit. Uh, it also makes it very clear that in that passage that, that God was not talking about literal physical animals, unclean animals. It says very clearly he was talking about the Gentiles. That, that, that what God makes clean don't say they're unclean. So talking about Gentiles being made as Jews. Okay? So that the unclean are, are made as clean. Okay? So that's, that is the way it is in Jewish thought. That's the way it is in a lot of people's, uh, in Jewish thought, in, in a lot of Jews today. And also, especially in ancient Jewish thought. Okay? Verse 28, But she answered him, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Okay? Now you look at this. The woman was humble. Key ingredient. Key ingredient to receiving anything from God. Key ingredient to being on God's good side is humility. The woman was humble. She didn't say, how dare you call me a dog? I'm not a dog. Oh, you sexist, racist, whatever it is. She was humble. She said, yes, Lord, I am a dog. Call me whatever you will. I'm not going to be offended. That's humble. Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Okay? Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. So she was humble and she was persistent. She was persistent. She didn't take no for an answer. Jesus basically told her no. Can you imagine that? Jesus told her no. She was humble. She was persistent. Again, look at Naaman. You know, in the story of Naaman, when Naaman had leprosy, and, he, and he's a great man, you know. He comes in, you know, a, a man from outside of Israel and in, in the neighboring country. He comes in, and he's a, a great nobleman, and he has a whole entourage and all that kind of thing. And he heard that, you know, Elijah would be there to heal him of his leprosy and he 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 expected god to come or excuse me elijah to come out and wave his hand over the spot that had leprosy and heal him and so he come with his whole entourage and wonderful royal royalty and he comes to elijah's house and elijah didn't even didn't even answer the door but sent his servant there saying 
go tell him to dip in the Jordan seven times and he'll be healed. He was offended. He was angry. But then somebody had the wisdom to, to say to him, listen, listen, Naaman, if Elijah would have told you something, if he would have come out and, you know, and told you something very great, like to climb a huge, like do some great feat, wouldn't you have done it? But, you know, to feed your pride, wouldn't you? Why? So why not do something like this? Why not do something easy and lowly? Because Naaman was offended. We, the river Jordan, there's a horrible river. That's a dirty river. We got way better rivers in, in our country. And he, he, he said to go dip in that, and he wants me to bathe in that, publicly bathe in there? You kidding me? But then he came to his senses. He swallowed his pride, and he did it, and he was healed. Just like this woman. She swallowed her pride. She would not take no for an answer. She would not get offended at, at, the, at the initial rejection of the Lord and almost you know, basically calling her names um, based on her maybe race or sex or whatever you want to call it, however you want to look at it. Verse 29, he said to her, for this saying, for what saying? She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs. Give me some. I demand I got some. Even the dogs has crumbs. For this saying, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. Verse 30, she went away to her house and found the child having been laid on the bed with the demon gone out. Again, he departed from the borders of Tyre and Sidon and came to the Sea of Galilee through the middle of the region of Decapolis. They brought to him one who was deaf and had an imp impediment in his speech. They begged him that he, uh, to lay his hand on him he took him aside from the multitude privately, put his fingers into his ears, and he spat. He spit. There's our clean, nice little Jesus spitting and touching his tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Athatha, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was released, and he spoke clearly. He commanded them that they should tell no one again. It's like oh, almost, almost every single time Jesus said, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Shh. Not like today's people. Not like, not like a lot of today's preachers where they want it to be broadcast. Look what happened in my ministry. Don't tell anybody. But the more he commanded them, the more, they, the more widely they, they proclaimed it. They were astonished beyond, beyond measure, saying he has done all things well. He makes even the deaf hear and the mute speak. So may God give you wonderful insight. Open the eyes of your understanding and show you great and mighty things beyond which you've ever known before. Thanks again for watching and God bless.